Hello there everybody, it's Sally here back with another Tuesday teaching tip for you. Now last week I was looking at conducting, uh, if you haven't watched that, I was kind of showing you why, uh, how to conduct, and talking about the importance of pupils being able to conduct, and of course to be able to conduct, they need to be able to feel that beat, and they also need to be able to count. So I'm just going to keep going with this idea of counting, and you can see the question is who counts, and why does it matter? Does it matter if you're doing all the work for your pupil um, in, in the counting respect? In, in one of our mastermind groups that we had in the Curious Piano Teachers, um, I, I recently put this question up about how independent rhythmically are your pupils? Are they able to count up loud? Are they able to use either rhythm language or metric counting to, to work out the rhythms themselves? And one, one, one teacher, and this is a bit like me, I have to admit, um, thought, you know, said, ah, you know, I, I, I think my pupils do quite well, actually. I think that they can count and are really quite uh, quite independent about this. Um, but she took a post-it note, another use for the post-it note, and she put it on the piano to remind herself to, to check this during lessons. Because I don't know about you, but I forget all the time what the main focus is sometimes. So post-it notes are really good for that. So she had the post-it note on, on her piano and... Actually, she found the pupils weren't quite as independent as she sort of thought they were. were. That's always a bit of a wake-up call, isn't it, about that? Um, so do you do all the counting for your pupils? Are you busy all the time going one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and... Because if you are, then A, you're working too hard, and B, you're robbing the pupil of their independence and their ability to do that when they're at home themselves. So why does it really matter? And it really really does why does it really matter for that the pupils need to counting allowed in your lessons well i can pull out at least three reasons so the first reason is that in three stages of learning the first stage is the cognitive stage okay so the first stage is cognitive and the cognitive stage is an essential stage it doesn't last very long but it is essential and it is characterized by speaking aloud. So in all, order to be able to count internally, you have to speak first. So it is so important that the pupil, the student, will learn to count one, two, three, four. Okay. So that's the first reason. It's part of the learning process. Miss it out and you're missing out a fundamental step. And then the second thing is um, it gives a little window doesn't it into our mind it really helps us to understand what the pupil is doing at that moment in time what are they understanding and without them counting aloud we don't really get the fact that they don't understand the rhythm or they're not able to reproduce it themselves okay so that's the second reason and the third reason is is that it slightly overloads the brain especially when you're playing and you're counting you probably have to go quite slowly and get your pupils to go really quite slowly to play and count at the same time because it's a lot of hard work. There's a tremendous amount going on when you're physically playing and your hand to count as well. So the cognitive side is really firing off as well as the physical side. And it does lead to a little bit of overload. But then when you take the counting internally and you feel that rhythm, instead of counting aloud you'll find that it actually makes the playing much easier okay so three reasons really why counting is so essential first it's part an essential part of the learning process it gives us the teacher a window into our pupil's mind and it it creates a, a temporary state of overload so that actually when you take it away everything feels so much easier so counting aloud Write yourself a little post-it note this afternoon. I'm certainly going to have it on your have it on your piano and see how much of the work you do for your pupils, or are you leading them step by step to being really independent so that they can go home and do the counting as well at home, and then come back the following week with the rhythm right. Isn't that good when that happens? Okay, hope that's been helpful for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, watching. Even watching, I can see Ruth is there. Hi, Ruth, welcome. And Charlotte as well. So thank you all so much. And Sharon's come to join the party as well. So it was all about counting today, leading your pupils towards independence 
and rhythmic independence in particular. Have fun. Happy teaching. Bye for now.